Hi and welcome, my name is Lizzie and if you're new here I create pen palling, journaling, crafty type content and today I'm going to be showing you five different ways to press flowers at home. There's going to be some traditional ways and some more modern ways and there's some for people who are patient and some ways for people like me who are very impatient. So. Without further ado, let's get into it. If you enjoy, please consider subscribing as I'll be doing some more tutorials in the future. So let's get straight to it. So the first method is probably the easiest and you have probably heard of this one before, but I just thought I'd include it anyway, just in case. The easiest way is to just use a book. And I would say that this is probably one of the most traditional ways as well in flower pressing It's probably been around for hundreds of years. Here I am just grabbing some flowers. These were from a bouquet from my friend because I recently moved house so I wanted to keep them and try and press them to keep them for some sort of journaling in the future. So I'm using a big vintage book, uh, it's actually a gardening book, but you could use any book and if you don't have a big chunky heavy book then you could literally just use a smaller one and then just stack other books on top of it or just stack other heavy things on top. The only downside with this one is it does take a while so you usually have to leave it in there for quite a while, at least a month. I do think that the way that they come out though is very nice so they do flatten out pretty well and as you can see here I've got kind of like a little chunky one here. I'm just trying to squish it down so that it has a bit of help flattening down and then here I've got one on its side because you can also press the flowers with the stems and I also wanted to press some leaves as well. You should also just be mindful of the book that you do use because if it's one that is very dear to you then just be aware that some of the colouring from the petals might press through onto the pages. So I'm just going to fold this over and then just leave it there and the best way is to kind of just forget about it and then hope that it does its job. So the next method I guess is a slight upgrade from just using a book because it's a flower press so it is specifically made for flower pressing so it tends to do a pretty good job. So here I am just undoing all the screws to see what is inside my flower press because I did add some things in yesterday but then there are also some things from quite a while ago so I can't actually remember what's inside. But a flower press is essentially two pieces of wood and then a bit like a cardboard and paper sandwich inside. So it helps keep everything flat and the paper is there to absorb any moisture as well. So these flowers I actually pressed yesterday. So to say they were only in there a day, that's pretty good. They still obviously need to stay in there and then I also pressed some of the individual petals as well so that's kind of your preference whether you prefer to press like whole flower heads or if you want to just do the petals. I wanted a bit of a mixture because I do like to use the petals in wax seals so I did a bit of both. And I did a couple of pages of these and I just wanted to check them and they were obviously still wet because they had only been in a day so they will have to stay in there probably for another two weeks I'd say. With a flower press it's not as long as a book, well it can be but it basically depends on the flower that you've used so if it's a very fresh flower or a flower that's been in water for a long time and it's got a lot of moisture or it's got big petals then it's going to probably need a lot longer than if you're just putting individual petals inside. So here I am adding some more flowers so you can see how I do press them inside the press. You might think that they look very chunky, well they do but that's kind of like the beauty of the press is you can kind of put any size flower in that you want, it doesn't matter how thick it is because as you tighten all the bolts 
it will just squish that flower down flat. And these are some that I did, I think about two weeks ago. They're still a tiny bit damp, so I am gonna leave them in for a little bit longer. And you saw me using my tweezers. That is the best way to take them off the press because otherwise you might risk kind of like bunching the petals up. And I would say that the tweezers is the best way to remove the flowers if you want them to stay intact. You don't have to use tweezers. Like I do sometimes use my fingers and if they are dry enough, they just kind of drop straight off the paper anyway. So here I'm doing another chunky one. And as you can see, I'm just snipping off the stem to help it squish down even further because I don't really need the stem in my flower once I've pressed it. And you might notice as well that some of the petals on the big one get a little bit bunched up. So I kind of just try and unfold those a little bit, but it isn't always going to be perfect. So that is kind of the beauty of it. You don't really know what you're going to get until you open up the press. So this way is another way where you are going to need some patience depending on what you're putting in it. So I kind of forgot what was in it. So it's kind of nice to have a surprise when you do open it. And the flower press does do a really good job. Like you can count on it to press your flowers to a really good standard. So this one my friend actually bought me for my birthday. And I don't think they're too expensive. You can definitely get them on Etsy and lots of different places. And as you can see, once it's all put together, everything is completely flat. You can't see any of the big chunky flowers. So now that we have had a little look at the more traditional methods, we are now going to go and have a go at some of the more modern ones that are best for people who are a little impatient like me because sometimes I don't wanna wait like a month for them. If I wanna use them for something specific and I wanna use like a certain flower for a certain craft. And if I just put them in my flower press, I'll just sometimes forget about them. <laughs> These three ways are really good if you just wanna get pressed flowers quickly. And most people have these things at home as well. So they're kind of like three everyday items. It's not anything magical that no one will have. So yeah, let's go and do that. The next way is to, yes, use a microwave. And all you'll need is a bit of kitchen towel, kitchen paper, or you could just use like a cotton cloth. And you just need something heavy and flat. So I just used this ceramic dish because the bottom is flat and it's quite heavy but it can also go in the microwave. So obviously don't put anything in the microwave that can't go in the microwave. It needs to be safe to go in there. And then you just need to put your flowers inside the paper and then you just need to fold over your paper on top. I would recommend that the smaller the flowers, the better. I do find that the big ones don't do as well, which you'll see when I do this one. But all that you need to do is put it in the microwave for 10 seconds and then take it out, check on it, and then just keep repeating that process until they are as dry as you want them. Definitely do not take your eyes off them though. You need to be watching these flowers because they can quickly like burn or just crisp up, which obviously isn't ideal. This was after one round. You can see a lot of the moisture has come out already but I do obviously want them to be a lot drier. Now, what I decided to do, which you can do, you don't have to do, is I decided to switch my flowers onto a new piece of towel so that more of the moisture would come out because as you can see, the paper towel is quite damp now. Now, the big flower didn't quite make it. I don't know if it was just the type of flower because it kind of did the same thing in the next technique as well. The middle just kind of disintegrated so all the petals came off but all the other ones, the leaf and the smaller flower and the petals by themselves, they pressed absolutely fine. So I think it just depends what kind of flower you've got really. So I ended up folding the paper back over and putting them back in for another 10 seconds and I think I did this for two intervals of 10 seconds. 
Once they are as dry as you want them, then just leave them to cool down and dry on the paper towel and then use your tweezers to take them off. The next technique is to iron your flowers. And all you'll need for this one is of course an iron, an ironing board, and then you need some greaseproof paper. And I just got mine from the supermarket, I already had it actually. And then simply you just need to put your flowers inside the greaseproof paper. Kind of like the smaller the better. It could just be that this particular flower for me didn't work quite well. So I just folded it over and then I used the ceramic tray just to squish it down but essentially you could just use a book or anything to just squish it because when you put the iron on you can't move the iron so do not count on your iron to squish it because it might not do a great job so it's better to squish it first so that you can get it into the correct shape first. When you put your iron on you need to put it in intervals of 10 seconds just like the microwave you do not move it around like you usually would an iron you just need to keep it exactly still otherwise all the petals will bunch up and then you can just keep checking on it as you're going as well don't be alarmed if you hear a sizzling sound because that's just all the moisture coming out so that is the ironing technique So the last technique isn't technically flower pressing, but it is flower printing and it does imprint the flower onto paper and it's really fun. So I thought I'd just show you this as well because if you like flower pressing, then you'll probably like flower printing as well and it's super easy. So all you'll need is a hammer, um, a piece of plastic, like a thin piece, so you could just cut it out from some packaging i think this was like a pastry box or something and then you just need some watercolor paper or if you don't have watercolor paper just some sort of artist type paper something thick that is meant to absorb like watercolors or gouache or acrylic paint or ink anything like that i've not actually tried it on a4 paper so it could technically work on that um, so you could always give it a go or even just try it on some like kitchen paper because that's pretty absorbent I guess But yeah, let's just get into it So basically you just need to use your hammer to whack it as much as possible You need to put the flower underneath the plastic sheet and then just keep going until you're happy with it This flower didn't actually work too well The middle worked really well, but I don't know if it's because it was too thick that then the petals didn't really make enough contact with the paper but I still think that it makes a really pretty like imprint and I can see this on a journal spread or something cute like that so then I tried to do a flower petal and again this didn't work as well I don't know if it's just because I was doing it on the floor on the rug so it's not the hardest of surfaces so I'm definitely going to keep trying that but as you can see there's loads of juice coming out of the green leaf so I think that one worked really well and it does kind of look like ink. So yeah, that's just a little something for you to try if you want to give that a go. Let me know in the comments if you do and if it goes any better for you guys than it has for me. But I think it's really fun and I definitely want to explore this more in the future. So my final thoughts. I think the best way in my opinion is the flower press or just using a book even though it takes a lot of time I think that the results are a lot better than when you use an iron or a microwave I do think that the, the iron is actually better than the microwave because you can kind of keep an eye on it a little bit more and you can control how you're pressing them and you can kind of see how you're squishing the flowers and things and the flower printing, that is still kind of a trial and error for me because I've only done it a couple of times and I think if you have more colourful flowers or fresher flowers, then I think it works better. So I'm going to have to experiment with that one a little bit more, but that's something I want to keep having a go with because I do really like the results of that one. 
And yeah, that's it. So I hope you can use some of these at home and let me know if there's any tips that you have or any other flower pressing ways that I can use in the future. I'm not an expert, I'm still learning, but I just wanted to share how I do it at home. And if you have enjoyed, make sure to subscribe because it really helps me out. And let me know if you want to see how I use pressed flowers in my crafts because I use them in my journals, I use them in my nature spreads and I use them in my pen paling envelopes and things. So let me know if you want to see that and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.